Welcome back to The Bible is Art, where we explore the literary artistry of the Bible. And this week, we're talking about the art of prophecy from Micah 5.2 in the second chapter of Matthew. Matthew has opened up his story with a genealogy, locating Jesus in the family of Abraham and King David. Then, Matthew narrates the strange circumstances of his birth, with Mary as the seventh woman in the Bible to have a story told about her inability to conceive. With the previous six women, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, Samson's mother, Hannah, and Elizabeth, John the Baptist's mother, they were unable to conceive even though they were having sex with their husbands when God miraculously gives life. But Mary, being the climactic seventh, has not even had sex and yet conceives. We'll have a video later on this and the purpose of barren women, but after the scene about Mary's conception of Jesus and Joseph's dream about not divorcing her, the narrator changes scenes from Mary and Joseph to Herod. Foreigners, wise men, come to Herod and tell him that they've heard that there's a king of the Jews who was recently born, but they don't know where he is. Like, what city? Herod doesn't know either. He doesn't even know a king has been born. So he asks the priests and the scribes, and they correctly quote from the prophet Micah in chapter 5 and verse 2. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. As is often the case, there's a lot more going on than a simple prophecy saying that something is going to happen in the future. But to understand what's going on, we need to look at the book of Micah. The book of Micah is organized into seven sections, as explained by David Dorsey. Notice, Micah has separate sections that condemn the people and the leaders for sin. One of the unique features of Micah is what he condemns the leaders for. Micah has been the only prophet of the 12 minor prophets up to this point to condemn the leaders for attacking, killing their own people. In chapter 3, the first three verses, Micah says, And I said, Hear, you heads of Jacob, and you rulers of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know justice, you who hate the good and love the evil, who tear the skin from off my people and their flesh from off their bones, who eat the flesh of my people and flay their skin from off them and break their bones in pieces and chop them up like meat in a pot, like flesh in a cauldron? These corrupt leaders were anti-leaders. The first job of a leader is to protect those whom he leads, and here they are killing their people. And in response, and instead of this leader, God will raise up a leader who is from the humble city of Bethlehem. Note the contrast of consumption. The evil king consumes his people. In contrast, God will provide a king from Bethlehem, a city whose name means house of bread. As a good ruler, God does not consume his people, but provides them with food. Okay, now back to Matthew. Notice, all the things that were going on in Micah are also going on in Matthew's gospel. Herod will destroy the children, and later another Herod will kill John the Baptist and serve his head on a platter, symbolic for consumption. The reason God sent a king from Bethlehem was because there were murderous rulers, precisely what Herod will become in a few verses. So while Herod learns the location of the king, he does not learn the reason for the king, the reason that condemns himself. And that, my friends, is why the Bible is art. Thank you everyone for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, Matthew is a wonderful gospel and it's so rich and it's been wonderful going through it. Um, if you have any questions, leave them below. If you'd like to support the channel, you can go to patreon.com slash the Bible is art. 
or uh, go to a website and check out stuff there, thebibleisart.com. Thank you so much. I'll see you later.